For the anyone but Trump contingent, Monday is the equivalent of Custer's last stand. That's when the members of the Electoral College, that controversial relic created by the Founding Fathers, convened to cast their votes for president. This is what this year's results look like. Donald Trump swept the nation's heartland and picked up 306 electoral votes, topping Hillary Clinton's bi-coastal support, which earned her 232. Those results fly in the face of the popular vote. As you know, Clinton has a lead of just under 3 million. The Electoral College is specifically outlined in the Constitution, Article 2, Section 1. It was put into place as a way to have a check on the voters. There was concern that with democracy being a new concept and many voters being uneducated, a more august body should weigh in as well. It's also a way to give small states a larger voice in the process. But with pronouncements by the CIA that Russian hacking was a deliberate attempt to sway the election in Trump's favor, 56 of the electors are requesting a security briefing before they cast their votes to determine if the president-elect had any role in the breaches. This move was launched by the daughter of House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi. So far, one Republican has joined the call for the briefing. Organizers are hoping they can get 37 Republicans to switch their votes. Reaction to this effort is falling along party lines. What I'm proposing is, is exactly the system as it is set up by the Constitution. I'm not proposing anything here that is extra legal or extra. We have an electoral college. The electoral college is made up of people who have judgment. I'm just saying the electoral college should exercise its judgment. We need to unite the country. People who are calling uh, Mr. Trump the electoral college president, you know, that's insulting to our democracy. There is no constitutional mandate that binds the electors to the candidate who carried their state, but in some cases there are state laws prohibiting an elector from switching their vote. Joining me is a Massachusetts elector, one of just 538. Paul Yorkus is from Medway. He was requesting the security briefing. Good to see you, Paul. R.J. Lyman is an attorney from Mince Levin who has been advising some Republican electors about their constitutional rights. R.J., good to have you here, too. Thanks, I was about to say I never heard of you, but then I realized we've met before. Yeah. However, I'm guessing that virtually none of the 1.9 million people who voted for Hillary Clinton ever heard of you. How do you get to be an elector? Well, you go to the, in my case, to the Massachusetts Democratic Party uh, meeting and you run. Um, there were about, I think, 30 people who ran this year. And I was fortunate in getting enough of them. Why are you requesting this briefing on the Russian hacking? What's the point? Well, the... There is a genuine concern, uh, as reported in the media, that um, there has been influence on our electoral process from another country. Uh, I believe, and many other electors believe, that we need to seriously, as a country, make sure that when we have an election, that the election is uh, fair. Yeah, but and like, honest. But like the, so the most the CIA is saying is that not only were, was there hacking by the Russians, but that their, one of their goals was to help Trump. The FBI disagrees on that part. They agree there was hacking, but not to help Trump. Let's assume that's proven in the briefing. Are you suggesting if the Russians are demonstrated to the electors to have been involved in trying to help Trump, that Trump electors should switch to somebody else? I think There's no the, allegation he had anything to do with it. I, I think it should carefully be evaluated. I signed a pledge that I would be voting for Hillary Clinton. It changes, it's different among all of the states. But I think um, the president of the United States is really the president of the free world. And I think whoever serves in that uh -huh. capacity, we want to make sure that that person has been elected fairly. Uh, RJ, you've been counseling, what, for, read, what, nearly two dozen Republican electors. They call on you or you call on them? I describe it more as discussing with discussing. them. Rather, I'm really not acting in my capacity as a lawyer, but as somebody who knows this topic. Who's calling who? Uh, it the, started with my, uh, through trusted intermediaries, people I knew and they knew through the political world, uh, conversations before the election with a very small number. Uh, subsequently, I've received a bunch of inbound calls. And what are they telling you? What do you tell them? Well, first, it's what they're asking me. Uh, which is, what's the job description? What am I supposed to do? I have my state law obligation, but I have my broader, uh, more important constitutional law obligation. And it's a balance. Uh, we don't have a democracy. We have a democratic republic. Two different functions. 
just like the bat, uh, But they don't have any constitutional obligation at all. Do they accept to go cast a vote well, if you, on December 19th? The issue is what does their state say? And my understanding is only one state says it's a felony to vote for correct. someone other than who won your state, and the rest are a small fine or some such thing, right? Yeah, with all due respect, I think they uh, do have a constitutional obligation. To do what? At, well, that's what Alexander Hamilton and James Madison told us in the Federalist Papers. They have the duty to reflect the sense of the people, but not slavishly to follow uh, their lead. They have the duty to find some fit person, whether one of the two, or in this case, or more candidates, or yet somebody else who can ultimately gain and retain the esteem and confidence of the nation. You were quoted in USA Today say, spoiler alert, in 1789 they anticipated 2016. With all due respect, in 1789, maybe you know something, there was not Twitter, there was not 24-7 cable, maybe there were uneducated masses, but you're basically suggesting to these people, based on what Hamilton said, for example, that maybe you, Paul and others, know more than the 62 million people who voted for uh, Donald Trump and the majority of people who in your state voted for Donald Trump. Isn't that what you're saying? Alexander Hamilton told us that the general populace might be blinded by a candidate with the talents for low intrigue and the small arts of popularity. Those aren't my words, those are his. That doesn't mean that an elector should inherently not vote for that person. But the founder said, let's pause six weeks, wait for the heats and ferments of the general election to cool, and then with discernment, people who have experience can think about whether ratifying that or throwing it to the House, or making a wholesale decision on their own. How many of those 20 do you think are going to flip from Trump to somebody else? I don't have any idea. Do you really not have any I idea? I really have no idea. I'm not in the business of recruiting people to a cause or a campaign. I'm in the business of trying to help make sure this institution, the one to which Paul yeah. belongs, functions. Isn't this whole thing dangerous? I mean, if, 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 if things were reversed, if, reversed here, Donald Trump had a, a, major, a popular vote lead, Hillary Clinton won the Electoral College, and there were people who were saying, well, we have it on good evidence that she's going to be indicted three minutes after she's sworn in on January 20th. Wouldn't you go crazy if, you, if there was an urging for people to flip their vote off Hillary Clinton? The People spoke. Well, people did speak, and actually, as you said in your introduction, almost three million more of my fellow, our fellow yeah. citizens, voted for That's Hillary Clinton. That's not how Clinton. we pick presidents. You know that better and, than anybody. And, and, and I know that. And this is one of the conundrums of... We have a, a constitution which we must live by, but we also have a popular vote. And how that's balanced, how my fellow electors from across the nation, how they're going to handle that. What uh, evidence do you have that any of these people in 1789 were saying, well, if Hillary Clinton in 2016 wins the popular vote, maybe that should weigh more on the mind I don't know of if, electors? I don't know if they knew Hillary Clinton no, was No, but you know getting, what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, they, but if they wanted the popular vote to determine the winner, they would have said the popular vote determines the winner. I, I agree with you. And at the same time, um, I think it's raised a discussion about the function of the Electoral College. You didn't answer my and question. You'd go nuts if the tables were reversed. Would you not be honest? No, I, I wouldn't. You really wouldn't? I, 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 I happen to believe that our country is bigger than this process, and I think it is very important for us to look at each of the candidates. I, in particular, don't happen to like Mr. Trump very much or his, policy, or his policies. Days, yeah. Uh, or the selection of it. people that he... It. Jim, but, let me flip your question. Please. If the Republican electors have a real discussion and debate amongst themselves, including about the Russian involvement, mm -hmm. about uh, his conflicts of interest, about his attention Voters to... Voters knew uh, there was uh, a uh, conflict of interest when they voted for the guy. But he has behaved in certain ways during the... Well, uh, and they, they have that real discussion debate, and they still vote for Donald Trump. I think the country's better off with that discussion and debate having occurred. But, R.J., if they don't, there's going to be a civil war in this country. You're not worried about the fact if 37 electors flip and decide to vote for someone other than Trump and Hillary Clinton is elected president on Monday or it goes to the House of Representatives, what do you think is going to happen in this country? Let's, let's assume you're saying Quickly, not a civil you war, yeah. but a constitutional crisis. I'd ask you, how many times have presidents been impeached or resigned? You know the answer. It's yeah. three. How many times has this process determined the president? You don't Zero. know the answer. Six. Determine the outcome? Yes. You don't know. John Quincy Adams over Andrew Jackson, Benjamin Harrison and uh, Grover Cleveland, uh, et, cetera, et cetera, including George W. Bush, as everyone knows. Where Slips we in the Electoral College? Different, different issue. Where the Electoral College 
played a role which is oh, different. Of course. Well, no, you say of course. But the crisis that occurs when John Quincy Adams winning 30 percent of the popular vote and uh, Andrew Jackson 41 and yet Adams wins it in the House after the electors refuse to go is not a crisis. That's the system working properly to balance all these interests. Good luck on Monday, Paul. Good to Thank see you. Thank you again. very much. Take care. Thanks for RJ, having thanks me. so much. Thank you. Great to Appreciate see you. It.